What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and to end the week, I thought we should probably make a Jaguar video because you guys did not like the Not a Jags podcast very much. But that's going to be a may stay on the channel, I think. I think I'm going to at least drop one a week, but I don't think I'm going to just drop that as a lone video a week. So one week we'll be getting two, uh, two videos, one being the Not a Jags podcast where I talk about like basically everything. This is ba- that's basically my new podcast. I'm just going to talk about anything I feel like that week. You know, maybe it will be about the Jags sometimes, even though the whole point of the podcast is to not talk about the Jags. But, you know, if you guys want to switch up and uh, hear me talk about something else and kind of just get to know me a little bit more, the Not a Jags podcast is a fantastic way for you guys to do that. But today we are talking about my favorite team, your favorite team, and your mom's favorite team, the Jacksonville Jaguars, ladies and gentlemen. We are talking about the newest additions to this team. And as I see it right now, the Jags really added 16 to 17 new pieces of the puzzle. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be ranking each new member of the Jaguars from who's going to make the least impact to who's going to be making the most impact in 2019, including the draft class and including free agency. So let us get technical, let us talk Jags football, and let us get way overhyped or way underhyped for some of these additions. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is ranking every single new addition for the Jaguars from worst to best by impact. Number 17, Dontavious Russell. Now, Dontavious Russell is going to be kind of participating to even get a roster spot uh, this year for the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, there's a lot of depth on this defensive line from top to bottom, and maybe he'll find his way onto the 53-man roster. But if he does, I don't think he's going to be making that much of an impact. I don't think he's going to be getting a lot of playing time. He was a seventh-round pick, and, you know, that's kind of what you get out of seventh-round picks. It's very rare that your seventh-round pick even stays on your team after you know, the after training camp's over, you know, once teams make their cuts, it's very rare for a seventh rounder to stick around. You know, last year we had Leon Jacobs being a starting linebacker last season. That's another name a lot of people kind of forget about is Leon Jacobs. Leon Jacobs is going to be, you know, a viable guy that might be competing for a linebacker spot, but we'll be talking about that maybe a little later. But Dontervius Russell, unfortunately, he probably won't be making the team, and he definitely is going to be making the least amount of impact out of anybody the Jaguars snap up during the 2019 offseason in the draft or in free agency. Number 16, Alfred Blue. The Jaguars really brought in a surplus of running backs during the offseason with Alfred Blue, Benny Cunningham, um, Alfred Blue, Benny Cunningham, and Thomas Rawls, and of course they draft Raquel Armstead. So they're going to have a lot of running backs in the running back room in 2019. And if there's going to be a guy to get cut or a guy that's going to be making the least impact, I would have to say it's going to be Alfred Blue. Alfred Blue hasn't really done a whole lot for during his time in Houston or anywhere else that he has spent time. So I don't really expect him to come in and really make an impact or really even stay on the team. I think he's going to be one of the running backs that ends up getting cut in 2019. And hopefully, you know, he does find a place, but I just don't think his place is here in Jacksonville. And I don't think he's going to be making a big impact for the Jaguars. Number 15, Gardner Minshew. Now, again, this is based on impact that they are going to be having in the 2019 season. Now, if I was going to talk about the future, Gardner Minshew would be number one, the next franchise quarterback, baby, no doubt about that. But Gardner Minshew, hopefully, knock on wood, won't even have to really be making an impact in 2019. I hope to see him play in the preseason, and I hope to see him play well in the preseason and show the NFL what he is truly all about and the quarterback that they missed out on. And hopefully, you know, teams like the Giants are kicking themselves. Like, we took Daniel Jones six overall, and the Jags got Gardner Minshew, the best quarterback of his draft class in the sixth round. Dang it, it's just like Tom Brady all over again. But (laughs) for 2019, Gardner Minshew, I don't think will be a factor. I hope Nick Foles stays healthy for the whole entire season again. Knock on some wood. But he's not going to have to make an impact in 2019. He just has to be the reliable backup. And if he does come in, then he needs to do his job. And hopefully he can make an impact, in which case he will be higher on this list of guys that will be making a big impact in 2019. But as of right now, he is obviously the backup quarterback. So he's going to be on the bench 
for basically the whole season. Hopefully, again, if Nick Foles stays healthy, I think it's a little bit too early to throw Gardner Minshew in there. So, you know, he just, if as long as he does his job and he shows up to work every day, he's going to be making an impact at his position, but he's just not going to be making the biggest impact out of any of the, uh, you know, guys that we picked up in free agency or through the draft. Number 14, AJ Can. We talked about this in our position battle that AJ Can is going to have Josh Wells breathing down his neck for his starting position. I don't think the Jags should have brought AJ Can back. We did re sign him though, and I think that's going to be a mistake because it's going to end up costing you money because you had a cheaper option and a guy that is just as good, if not better, than him uh, in Josh Wells. I would have been so much, so fine just letting Josh Wells kind of ride it out because he's, he's had an opportunity to do it, and I mean, he's been all right. When we had like a decimated offensive line, you know, he was probably the best offensive lineman we had out there, you know, back when we had like Corey Robinson, Tyler Shatley, you know, all those guys. He probably held down the fort the best out of any of those, uh, you know, bench skeleton crew offensive line. And I think that he has potential to be a starter and to, you know, have his weaknesses kind of hit over a strong offensive line. But AJ Can, unfortunately, has not proved himself to necessarily be worthy of that right guard position. 2017, he struggled, and that was the best season that we've had. 2018, more struggles, and then he gets a contract extension. I don't understand it. But like I said, I think Josh Wells is going to be knocking on his door all throughout the offseason. And don't be surprised if Wells gets the starting spot over AJ Can. And I don't think AJ Can is going to be making much of an impact in 2019. Number 13, Benny Cunningham. I think Benny Cunningham has a lot of potential to make the roster for the simple fact that I think he's going to be filling in the Corey Grant kind of role. You know, a smaller guy that has a lot of speed and he's going to be effective in, you know, the kind of the RPO system and uh, on fake punts as well. You know, the Jags always like to get tricky and maybe he'll return punts or kicks. You know, like I said, he's a speedy guy. You know, he's small, reminiscent, kind of like a Darren Sproles or a Corey Grant, like I said. And I think that that's going to be kind of his role. I do think he's going to make the roster. I don't think he's going to be putting up monstrous stats in 2019 but I think he'll get his fair share of playing time and I think he'll be able to show us why you know he's a asset to a team and not a liability you know once he gets his number called hopefully he does great things you know and he's not going to be getting his number called very often but like I said when he does hopefully he goes out there and he does great things because he has potential to every time he touches the ball he has potential to bust free and make it a huge huge play so I am pulling for Benny Cunningham but I don't think he's going to make the most impact out of the running backs that the Jags have newly acquired in 2019. Number 12, Thomas Rawls. I think Thomas Rawls has a spot on this roster over Alfred Blue and Benny Cunningham. I think that he is going to be the third running back on the depth chart in 2019 because of some other guy we have not uh, yet named. I think is going to be number two on the depth chart, but uh, Thomas Rawls is a guy, he gets hurt a lot, <laughs> he gets injured quite often, so, you know, the further and further we can bury him in the depth chart, probably the better in the limited amount of reps, but, you know, hopefully when he gets his chance, when he gets his shine, he can make an impact. Uh, like I said, I think he's going to be probably third on the depth chart, so he's going to, I think, oh, man, he might be he might be fourth on the depth chart, because I don't think he'll get in there as much as Benny Cunningham will because I think there's going to be certain situations that Benny Cunningham is going to come in and play and I just think Thomas Rawls is going to be kind of that backup running back you know what I mean like if you know Leonard Fournette goes down or the other guy we're going to talk about in a little bit and if you haven't found out who that is already you're obviously not a Jags fan shame on you uh you know if he goes if he goes down or if Leonard goes down then I think Thomas Rawls is the next man up in that situation I don't think they're going to make Benny Cunningham an every down back and I think we're going to cut Alfred Blues. So uh, Thomas Rawls probably going to be the backup bell cow for the Jaguars. Uh, not going to be one of those guys that kind of rotate in. I think that that's going to be reserved for Leonard Fournette, the guy we haven't talked about yet, and Benny Cunningham. But, I mean, you know, I think it makes sense. Like, I think you guys know what I mean, that if Leonard goes down or this other guy who are supposed to be kind of our bell cows, uh, then Thomas Rawls would step in because Benny Cunningham kind of lacks the size to be an every down back and, uh, I think he's com he'd be comfortable in his role, and I think Thomas Rawls, he's done it in Seattle. He's did it a little bit with the Jets. He's used to being an every down back, so I think he's going to be the true backup running back for the Jaguars in 2019. Number 11, Cedric Ogobaye. I have Cedric Ogobaye this high because, you know, we really don't know 
what the Jags are going to be doing at the right tackle spot. You know, everybody thinks it's a given. Jaywan Taylor is going to get the start, and I am a part of that, and I agree with you, and I think he should get the start. But, you know, the, he's a veteran. Cedric Okabaye is. Uh, I think he was, I believe he was a first round draft pick. Uh, when he got drafted so this is a guy that is not necessarily a slouch he wasn't really in the best situation in Cincinnati so maybe he's going to be able to emerge as a starting right tackle a quality starting right tackle um, and you know he's going to be battling out with Jaywan Taylor throughout uh, the offseason and through training camp so it's going to be very interesting and even if Jaywan Taylor goes out you know he's going to be the next man up so he's going to get some snaps if Jaywan Taylor gets hurt uh, or vice versa if, J if uh, Cedric gets hurt Jaywan will get some snaps but you know he's gonna be a depth guy he's gonna be a good backup tackle if what we think is true and Jaywan Taylor is gonna get the starting job I think he's gonna be very solid at a backup tackle position for either the right side or the left side in 2019 number 10 Josh Oliver now this is a guy I have been really really hard on in 2019 um Josh Oliver was our third round selection in 2019 and I wasn't necessarily very happy with it I think that he tr possesses a lot of upside but I think he also needs a lot a lot of work so I don't think he's going to be making an impact too much in 2019 I still think he'll get more snaps than a lot of guys I listed above him um, maybe the only guy that'll get more snaps than him will be like AJ can because you know AJ can supposedly going to be our starting right guard next year but I, I have a I have a weird feeling that Josh Wells might beat him out for it. So, you know, Josh Oliver, I don't think will get the starting tight end job. I don't think he should, at least. I think that we should definitely kind of try and bring him along and, you know, bring him in on some place. Like, on third downs, you know, we could split him out wide. We don't really do that with our tight ends, and that's kind of the tight end that Josh Oliver is. He goes out wide. You know, he's not a hand-in-the-dirt uh, blocking tight end he's just not that's not his style of play and that's again why I was very surprised the Jags drafted him because again that's just not how he plays football so Josh Oliver I think that he's going to be getting some limited snaps but hopefully in those snaps that he does play he can shine because I don't think he's going to make that much of an impact in 2019. Number nine Jeff Swaim. Now, Jeff Swaim's a guy I can see the Jaguars starting in 2019, even though he doesn't really possess the same athletic ability that Josh Oliver possesses. I think he possesses more of what the Jaguars are looking at at the tight end position. Uh, I think he's a good run blocker. I don't think he's great by any means, but I think he can get the job done. And, you know, he put up decent stats in Dallas, nothing that'll straight up shock you or blow you away. And that's why I, I wish the Jags did a better job at addressing the tight end position. I say this almost every single video because I don't think Jeff Swaim and Josh Oliver are necessarily the two tight ends you want in 2019 and I don't think that that necessarily helps Nick Foles out I think maybe Josh Oliver with his athletic position and his athletic ability maybe can help uh, Nick Foles later on once he develops and kind of hones his uh, skills and he gets more playing time maybe you know with how athletic he is he can bust out and show how good he is but Jeff Swain's another guy that just unless he's just super reliable in the short game, you know, he's not going to kill you deep. He's not going to outrun your safeties, your linebackers, you know, he's not going to do that. But, you know, I think he's going to help out a lot in the run game, and I think that he's going to be the starting tight end next year, and I think that it's going to be an all right ride. I don't think it's going to be terrific by any means, and like I said, I wish the Jags did a better job at addressing the tight end position this year. Number eight, Raquel Armstead. Now, this is the running back I was talking about that I wasn't going to name, and uh, he possesses a lot of Leonard Fournette in him, and I think he has a little bit more speed than Leonard Fournette. I think he's a little speedster that has, a, has some trucking to him, has some power running ability as well. And, you know, he has a lot of Leonard Fournette in him, with, too, with his downsides. Uh, you know, when he played for Temple, he was basically their star player, and people would load up in eight-man boxes. But he's probably not going to have to face that because, you know, Leonard Fournette's going to get all that attention, and probably they won't stack the box when a guy like Raquel Armstead comes in for his first couple of snaps in the NFL. It'll be like, 
okay, let's feel this kid out. Let's see what he's about. But this guy has a lot of upside and a lot of potential, and I'm very, very excited for it. You know, I wasn't too hyped about this draft pick when we first made it, but now looking at some film and looking at what this kid can actually do, I am very, very excited because the front office was very smart with this pick. You know, when Leonard Fournette goes down, we really didn't have a running back that kind of matched his style. Raquel Armstead matches that style, so it's almost going to be like Leonard Fournette never went away. And, you know, we still have that bruising downhill running back that can make you miss an open field as well and can outrun you and it can, you know, truck you over and things like that. I think Raquel Armstead is going to be a key addition to the Jaguars in 2019, and he's going to show you why when he gets his reps. Number seven, Quincy Williams. You know what annoys me the most about Quincy Williams is that all these NFL experts now are acting like they called it. They're, <laughs> they're acting like, Oh, the Jags, such a smart move landing Quincy Williams. He was the biggest sleeper on my draft board. Such a sleeper. Such a, such a sleeper. Wow, Jags. Good job. You know, I knew about this guy. No, you didn't. <laughs> Any expert that claims they knew about Quincy Williams prior to the draft is a big, fat liar. I don't care. He wasn't even in people's top 350, top 700. You know, people didn't know about Quincy Williams that were experts in the draft field. You know, the only people that knew about him were scouts and NFL executives. If you see people that are mock drafters or draft analysts and they tell you that they knew about Quincy Williams and they knew he was going to be a stud, don't listen to him because they didn't. They really did not. They had no idea who he was when he got drafted. The only people, again, that knew who he was were draft, you know, scouts and people that were inside NFL teams' as front offices. Those are the people that knew who Quincy Williams were. Not a, none of these draft analysts. Sorry, I had to get that out of the way. But Quincy Williams is a raw, raw potential, raw talent. And he just fits, fits. He just fits with the Jags. And it didn't seem like he was going to be getting any playing time this year. But now that Telvin Smith isn't playing, it's all fair game to these linebackers. And I think he's going to have a chance to maybe start in 2019 and show his true raw ability and trust. When he gets a little fundamentals under him, when he gets kind of his game more figured out and he's not just a licker and a hard hitter, this guy is going to be scary and he's going to be one of the better players on this Jaguar defense that is already tremendously solid. Do not sleep on Quincy Williams. This guy is going to be making a huge impact in 2019, and no one seen it coming. No one. Don't believe anyone if they say that they knew who Quincy Williams was because they did it. Number six, Jared Wilson. Jared Wilson signed a contract extension with the Jags, and we didn't really think anything of it. And then we cut to Sean Gibson, and then, you know, he's kind of slated in there as a starter. We didn't really think much of it. We're like, oh, we're going to be drafting somebody, give him some, you know, competition. Nope, nope, we're just going to be rolling with Jared Wilson, I guess. You know, it's almost like the tight end position, like the free safety position and the tight end position, man. Those are the two positions I wish the Jaguars did more with. But Jared Wilson, out of everybody I've named so far, is almost guaranteed the most amount of snaps out of anybody listed thus far he's going to be the start in free safety and once he when he got his potential I mean when he had his opportunity to show what he can do he showed it and he played pretty well he didn't play tremendous he didn't play great but he played pretty well and you know the Jags must have liked what he, they seen from him and they probably knew they could have got him for cheap and they did so you know going the cheap route I understand but hopefully this kid can ball out and he's definitely going to be making the most impacts definitely based on snap count and, you know, if he comes around and he shows that he's a baller, then, oh, my God, Jared Wilson, steal of the century, signing that small contract extension. And uh, I think he's going to be doing a decent job in 2019. And look out for Jared Wilson coming across the middle, and maybe he'll intercept your favorite quarterback. Number five, J1 Taylor. We talked about J1 Taylor a little bit when we talked about Cedric Ogabaye. And we discussed about how he is supposed to be our starting right tackle in 2019, and I hope he is. I think he was the steal of the draft in 2019. Getting J. Juan Taylor in the second round was truly amazing and truly unbelievable. Um, you know, we didn't want him at seven because we didn't think he was worth it at seven. Maybe if we were picking a little later, like if I had, like the Texans took Titus Howard, an offensive tackle out of bumfuck nowhere, over Jawan Taylor, and there were some other questionable offensive linemen chosen 
over Jawan Taylor. And the fact that the Jags were able to capitalize on all these teams' mistakes and solidify them and lock them down is huge, especially because we already have a really solid offensive line. And all these signings, these little offensive lineman signings the Jags have been making have been really solid to really give them a good overall depth at the offensive lineman position. And I think Jawan Taylor is going to pitch in as a starter, and I think that he's going to be a part of a great offensive line in 2019 and hopefully can keep Nick Foles standing up. Number four, Chris Conley. Chris Conley is going to be the number three or number four wide receiver for the Jaguars in 2019, and he has a lot of potential. He played well with Patrick Mahomes, who's a very solid quarterback, and hopefully if Nick Foles can play like Nick Foles can, he's going to be around another solid quarterback, and he should have an opportunity to absolutely shine, especially with how these wide receivers are. None of them really stand out out of the pack. Chris Conley really can stand out and maybe be the leading wide receiver this year. Nothing will surprise me. Any of these wide receivers in 2019 have potential to be the leading receiver next season, and I think Chris Conley can throw his hat in the ring for that as well. He's going to be a starter right off the bat. I think he's going to be seeing a lot of playing time, and I think he's going to be a favorite target of Nick Foles because, you know, they already got that chemistry building from Kansas City, and allegedly they're also really good friends uh, off the field. So I think Chris Conley is going to be making a really big impact in 2019, and you should think the same way. Number three, Jake Ryan. Jake Ryan, your starting middle linebacker of the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2019. There, I said it. I think they're going to adjust and move Miles Jack to either the Sam or the Will side and have Jake Ryan kind of control things in the middle. And I think he's going to be doing a tremendous job at doing that. He's a linebacker that, unfortunately, again, tore his ACL. We've talked about it before. And this year is basically going to be his bounce back year. And I think he's going to bounce back hard and show why the Packers should have signed him again because he's a solid uh, middle linebacker and he's a solid piece to any defense he could be around and I think he's also a decent leader I think he's a pretty good leader as well you know I've seen some tape of him he's really good against the run he's questionable against the pass but we need somebody who's good against the run because uh, our pass defense is always really good our run defense is always you know like 12th or 11th and you know we need to step that up so both sides of our defense can be top 10 I mean top five and then you know our defense obviously overall can be number one so I think Jake Ryan is going to be a great asset to the Jaguars in 2019 and you should think the same way number two Nick Foles Nick Foles our starting quarterback in 2019 can you be more excited or could you be more scared or could you be more skeptical no this whole Nick Foles thing has been Basically the biggest storyline of 2019 and probably the biggest storyline even going towards maybe like week 9, week 10 of the regular season in 2018. You know, Nick Foles has been connected to the Jaguars for a very, very long time during this offseason period. And now that we signed him, you know, it's going to be crazy to see him play because, you know, I almost can't believe it. You know, I almost can't believe the Blake Bortles era is over and Nick Foles is going to be our guy. But we're all going to have to believe it. And obviously with him being the starting quarterback, he should definitely be making the biggest impact in 2019. He's the leader of the team. He's the quarterback of the team he's everything that this team runs through and Nick Foles should be the lifeblood of this Jaguar offense in 2019 but I don't think he's going to be making the biggest impact of a acquisition the Jaguars made in the 2019 offseason because that man is coming in at number one we have Josh Allen whether we decide to line Josh Allen up as a linebacker or as a defensive end I think he's going to be very very successful the steal of the draft in 2019 could have been J1 Taylor or it could have been Josh Allen and the Jags landed both of them the crazy craziness of the NFL draft in the first round saw Josh Allen fall to the Jaguars lap at number seven and it was truly truly amazing and truly insane I could not believe it I was very very excited with this pick and he's going to be a part of this defense where I think he will fit in well. And, you know, the front office has already said they want him to kind of fill the Dante Fowler role. And I think he'll do that very well. There's a lot of similarities to Dante's and Josh Allen's game. They're both tremendously raw. And I think Josh Allen, though, I think he has more potential to stay out of trouble, first of all, and to um, really hone his skills more. And I think out of anybody the Jags got in this 2019 offseason or retained in this offseason, I think Mr. Josh Allen is going to be making the biggest impact in 2019 from a statistical standpoint and from just an overall player standpoint. And I cannot watch it, wait to watch him play 
in 2019. And that was me ranking every single Jaguars offseason acquisition from worst to best. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you check links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.